In this video, we'll be going through the basics of animation within Grease Pencil, and we'll be making this bouncing ball animation. This is part two of my Grease Pencil series. In part one, we went through the interface and the basics of drawing, so do make sure you check that out first. So let's jump in and make this bouncing ball animation. So I'm in a new 2D animation file. So if I go to File, New, you can see 2D animation there, and that's what I've got loaded up. I've got my screencast keys in the corner over here, and I'm in Blender 4.4.3. I've got the pencil tool enabled just here and the pencil brush is displayed up here and you can see it highlighted here. So if I draw, that's the pencil brush there. I note it's using what's called the solid stroke just there. I'll undo that though, because I prefer the ink pen brush. So I'll select that and you can see it highlighted there, ink pen, and let's draw a ball at the top of our canvas just there. What I'm going to do is animate this ball falling down onto a floor down here and bouncing back up again. So as a classic starting animation. Now for this, I'll need my dope sheet down the bottom here, and this displays the keyframes for my animation. Now, because I did this drawing with the lines layer selected, that means it is on my lines layer. So if I hide this now, it will hide the ball. And if I bring it back, it brings back the ball. We've also got a fills layer below that. I'll save that for the fills, but I want another layer for my floor. You can add a new layer just here. So add layer, I'll call it floor and click add. So we've got a floor layer at the top of our stack at the moment. The order does make a difference. It's like Photoshop where one will be on top of the other. So the floor is on top at the moment. It doesn't really make too much difference, but you kind of expect it to be on the bottom and you can move the layers by these down and up arrows just here. So the floor is now down at the bottom. If you've not got enough space, then you can come in the middle here and move the window up slightly and you can see a bit more clearly. So now with my floor layer selected, I can draw a floor. So there's my slightly wonky floor, which the ball is going to fall onto. Now it was important that I had that on a new layer. I'll explain why in just a moment. But first let's think about how long it's going to take for my ball to fall down and bounce back up. I would say maybe half a second to fall down to the floor and then another half a second to bounce back up again. And that's roughly about 24 frames. So somewhere around here. So we've got all this space at the end here that we don't need. We can change the end frame to something about 30. So just over a second to give us a little bit of breathing room. And then I can zoom in to this part of my timeline. Middle mouse button will strafe across so I can bring it into the middle like this and control middle mouse button will zoom in like so. And if you have a pen tablet, then setting your pen button to middle mouse button will be advantageous. So let's say our ball is going to hit the floor in about half a second. So roughly around frame 12. So just here. And with the lines layer selected, I'm going to draw a new ball hitting the floor down here. Let's say it's stretched out as it goes to the bottom. So it goes from here down to the bottom in 12 frames. Now notice there's a keyframe being added at this point. So these diamond things are called keyframes. So there's the beginning frame, which we can see faded out there. And then we've got this current frame here. This faded out line here is called onion skinning. You can turn that on and off just here in the layers. So onion skinning, you can turn that off and then on again. It's very helpful though to know where the last keyframe was. Now, the reason I wanted the floor on a different layer was notice when I started to draw this new circle, it's deleted the old one. It assumes you want to draw this object in a new position. If the floor was on the same layer as my ball or the lines, then that would disappear as well. Hence why we needed it on a new layer. Now, if you use Blender as a 3D tool, setting two keyframes like this, Blender would work out the kind of in-between bit. So if we had a default cube move from here to here, you would set up your two keyframes like this and it would do the movement in between for you. However, Grease Pencil is slightly different. If we take this keyframe, it stays the same all the way until we hit this keyframe where it hits the bottom of the floor. So at this point, we can draw the keyframes in between. So let's go to, let's say frame six. I can draw a point in the middle here where it's not quite as stretched out as here. So it's sort of halfway between the two, a bit of an oval shape. It's not particularly good, but we're not here to discuss my art abilities right now. So we've got a middle point there. It's not quite the middle point. Notice we start on frame one, so we've got slightly less this side than this side, but you don't really notice too much difference there, especially with such badly drawn animations. Notice we've got a green outline for the previous frame in terms of the onion skinning. So this faded out green and then a sort of faded out purple for frames preceding our current keyframe. So if I go to frame three here, so roughly around there, it's showing me frame one, which is this one here, because that's what we're going to see all the way along. But as soon as I start drawing in the middle, so something a bit like this, notice this one turns green. That's the onion skinning. It's saying your previous keyframe was just here and your subsequent is just there. And then we could go perhaps in the middle here and draw one in the middle there. Maybe I want that a little bit longer actually, like this. <laughs> okay, so if I 
scrub across my timeline, so drag the playhead across, and you move the playhead by pressing on the top of your timeline like this. I can scrub across and you can see that animation kind of happening there. You can also press the play button down here and it just falls down to the floor and nothing happens after that. So I'll stop that by pressing that play button. Incidentally, that's the space bar is the shortcut for that and space bar again to stop. Notice next to these play buttons, you do have some options of jumping to the previous keyframe and you can jump across your keyframes like this, or you can jump to the end of your animation and the beginning of your animation here. You can also play backwards if that helps, not something I use very often. Next to that, we have the record button. Generally speaking, that's always turned on when you're working in Grease Pencil, so it's recording all your strokes as keyframes. Now you might feel this is a little bit of a rough animation because it's got three frames of pause before hitting the next keyframe. So you might want some in-between frames somewhere in here. It's a little bit tricky when you've got three frames between each. So I could probably put one about here and just make sure it's slightly closer to the one above than the one below, and maybe one in here as well, if we wanted to sort of clean that up and the next one just there. So we're adding a little bit more detail to our animation. If I press play now, it's a little bit smoother. It's still not great, but it's not too bad. Okay, so let's squash our ball when it hits the floor. So it hits the floor and I'll do two more keyframes, make it go a little bit squashed and round, couple more. And I think that's far enough for a sort of squash effect. Let's just see what that looks like and I'll press play. Okay, so what we've got is a fairly smoothish animation coming up to frame 12, but then it seems to slow down because there's too many frames between these keyframes. Well, we can actually move these keyframes quite easily just by clicking on them. And it's worth noting here that the summary is the summary of all the keyframes underneath. And then you have strokes and you can have different strokes in your scene. And the stroke is all the layers of that stroke. So in essence, if I click on the top one, it selects all the ones underneath. And if I click on the stroke one, it's going to click on all the layers underneath that. But for now, we can just click on the top one knowing we're going to select all the ones underneath. So I can click on them and then dragging them across. So I can click on this one and drag it across. There's other options actually, I'll undo that and undo that change as well. I can select all three of these and wherever my playhead is, so remember I can move this playhead, I can move it to the beginning here and then press S to scale and move my mouse in and I can scale all those keyframes together. So let's play our animation and see what this squash looks like. That's a bit faster and therefore a bit better, I think. Now we need to get to this point and then make it go backwards and up again. So it goes across like this and back again like this. Well, what we can do, I'll move my playhead to this point here and then I can select all these keyframes at the top here. So I can box select across here and I can duplicate them. And we do that by pressing Shift D. So Shift D to duplicate, move my mouse across and you can see them moving across to there. That's great, but if I play it, it just goes down and down again. What we need to do is rotate these keyframes, flip them in the horizontal basically. So if I move my playhead to the end here and with these keyframes selected, remember you can box select these keyframes like this, I can press scale X minus one, that's the X axis minus one, that flips it across. Make sure you press enter at the end and now I can press G to grab, move that across and place that at the end there and let's press play and see what happens. We've got this bouncing ball. It pauses a bit at the top and I can probably change the end frame to 28 and I'll have a bit of a smoother bounce. Not that smooth because it kind of needs to slow down at the top actually, but that could be part of the challenge. So I'll change this to something like 32 and let's move this one out slightly. We'll go to 30. So there's a bit of a pause at the top and then I'll just spread these ones out a little bit. So it sort of drops a bit slowly and we need to do the same up the end here. So if I select all these, I can kind of move them forward a bit. So G to grab, I can control box select these ones to deselect them and then grab those ones further. Let's see what that looks like. So it slows down a bit at the top. It's not awful, but it's okay. It needs a bit of work, but at least we're getting the idea. Okay, so how do I fill the shapes in with some color? I talked about the fill layer here. Let's go to that now. Let's go to frame one and let's go to the fill brush. Now clicking on the fill brush is the start of filling it in, but actually you need to change the material of the stroke. So I'll change across to the solid fill. So you need the fill brush enabled, but you also need the fill material enabled as well. And you can find the materials down the bottom here. I'll just bring this out slightly so you can see it more easily. So I'm on the solid fill just there. And there's some color options just here. Now you would think you'd just tap once to fill this in, but there's a strange setting enabled where you have to tap twice. I don't really understand completely that setting. But if you go to the tool settings here with the fill brush, 
turned on, so that's the same as the fill brush here. I can scroll down a bit and under the advanced options under brush settings, open up the advanced, scroll down to gap closure, turn off visual aids. And that means you can just click it and it will fill it in. So my fill brush now I can just use with one click. The problem is I've got this one fill layer here and if I move across, it stays up the top there. So I need to animate this along with my lines. So I can click on this one, move across to the next one, click on this one. It's a little bit tedious this. There is a way up here called multi-frame editing, but that's probably for another session as it can be a little bit confusing. But I'll just jump across with my arrow keys a couple of frames until I get to the next keyframe. And I'm looking at the keyframes down here, making sure I'm over the keyframe and then just clicking to fill those in. So arrow keys to go to the next keyframe and filling in the strokes. And let's play that through. And we've got a nice ball bouncing there. Now lastly, there's two useful things that I think will be really important for you to either remember or to know. First of all, the thing that I find most beginners really struggle with is this idea of materials for your objects. So we can see the materials up here, but we can also see them in the material panel down here. And it's really important to understand that anything that uses this solid fill, so all the fill strokes we've made, are actually changeable with the fill option down here. So if I change this to blue, it changes our circle to blue. And when it runs through, it's now blue. It's quite a useful feature that, but it is really something you have to bear in mind and understand that anything that's painted with this particular fill brush has this fill texture down here. The same with the solid stroke. So if I go to that and I change the stroke to something like red, you can see it's changed both the stroke of the ball and the stroke of the floor, which used this brush with the solid stroke material. It's changed this to red and you can see it's red all the way through. So that's something that's really important to understand about the way Grease Pencil uses materials. I'll change this back to black because the red doesn't look great. And one other really useful tip is let's say I go between frame six and nine and I think, oh, the middle frame here at frame eight is just off a little bit. You can go into edit mode. So we're in draw mode at the moment. You can go into edit mode and select things like the stroke or the points. I kind of don't use segments very much, but let's say strokes. I can then choose the stroke, and press G to grab and move it around and change the position. So now it's in a slightly different position, not a good position, but I can easily grab and modify the strokes I've made. And you can see that working there. So hopefully that's given you a nice, simple introduction to animation within Grease Pencil. If you've got any questions, then comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.